But is there any published scientific evidence which challenges the evolutionary view of an ancient Earth and supports a young Earth? Scientist Dr. Robert Gentry, while working at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Tennessee, has found just that. Publishing evidence which challenges the long time period of Earth's history. In 1977, the Research Communications Network published a special breakthrough report on the results of Dr. Gentry's scientific publications, characterizing their implications as follows. Current physical laws may not have governed the past. Earth's primordial crustal rocks, rather than cooling and solidifying over millions of years, crystallized almost instantaneously. Some geological formations thought to be 100 million years old are in reality only several thousand years old. Grant these propositions and any researcher will tell you the entire structure of the historical natural sciences would dissolve into formlessness. Few certainties would remain. Yet these very possibilities and others equally challenging have been suggested in a remarkable series of papers published over the past several years in the world's foremost scientific journals, Nature, Science, and Annual Review of Nuclear Science, among others. From Research Communications Network, Breakthrough Report 1977. vast energy resources. Before we can answer the question as to the age of coal and the time of its formation, we need to ask the question, where did coal come from? Here in this coal mine in Price, Utah, we have the answer. Here is a law almost completely turned to coal. There are thousands of such logs in this mine and in other mines here in the Price area. This fact tells us that given the right conditions of pressure and temperature and water and time, that wood and other vegetation will turn to coal. The question is, how long did it take for that to happen? Robert Gentry and his son David, an associate in his father's work, explore this topic together. To answer this question, we need to look at coalified wood specimens from uranium mines instead of coalified wood, like this log, from one of the coal mines here in the Price, Utah area. This coalified wood specimen comes from La Salle, Utah, a uranium mine. Its presumed geologic age is around 140 million years. This specimen of coalified wood comes from a uranium mine in the Temple Mountain area here in Utah. Its presumed age is also 140 million years. But look how closely this specimen resembles this other piece of wood. They're nearly identical. It's interesting to note that this other piece of wood was derived from a fresh piece of wood like this just a few weeks ago. This close similarity raises an important question. Is it really true that this piece of coalified wood from La Salle, Utah, and this piece of coalified wood from Temple Mountain, Utah, are really 140 million years older than this piece of wood which David and I recently obtained in some of our experiments? Not really. Locked in these and other coalified wood specimens from uranium mines, is some remarkable evidence that tells quite a different story. To see that evidence requires that the coalified wood specimens be mounted in epoxy, then be sliced, and then placed on glass slides for observation under the microscope. Under the microscope can be seen discolorations produced by radioactive particles ejected from tiny centers. Some are circular, others are elliptical, as can be seen in these photographs. These circular and elliptical halos required a special sequence of events to form. So special, in fact, that they completely overthrow the idea of an ancient age of coal, pointing instead to coal's recent formation 
geologically speaking. In 1976, I published my results of the studies on these logs in the October 15, 1976 issue of Science. Here's what I said in this report. Such extraordinary values, referring to these land uranium ratios, admit the possibility that both the initial uranium infiltration and coalification could possibly have occurred within the past several thousand years. In other words, I was suggesting that coal could form very rapidly, geologically speaking. It contradicted the conventional way in which people have thought about the formation of coal. What was the reaction of the scientific community to this new data? I received a letter from Professor Raphael Kasman of Louisiana State University several months later, January 27, 1977. Dear Dr. Gentry, I have been patiently scanning the letters section of science since the publication by you and your colleagues of your findings on radio halos. The silence is deafening. I think it can be interpreted as stunned silence. Your results will not greatly trouble the engineer, but the impact on the science of geology in possibly changing the accepted views as to the duration of geologic time will be felt for many years. Very truly yours, Raphael Kasman. Soon thereafter, Professor Kasman organized a symposium. It was entitled, It's About Time, Four and a Half Billion Years. Is the Earth really four and a half billion years old? When the results of the symposium were written up and published in the September 1978 issue of Geo Times, here's what was said. However, since the deposits from which the coalified wood was obtained are considered to be at least of Cretaceous age and possibly of Jurassic or Triassic age, the ratio between uranium-238 and lead-206 should be low. Instead, some such halos have been found with uranium-lead ratios ranging from about 2,200 to over 64,000. If isotope ratios are to be used as a basis for geologic dating, then presently accepted ages may be too high by a factor of 10,000, admitting the possibility that the ages of the formation are to be measured in millennia. Translated, that means several thousand years for the formation of coal and all of those geologic formations. This information has remained unchallenged and unrefuted in the open scientific literature since it was published in 1976. 